Hi, this is a 1969 Chevy Camaro that I have for sale. I'm just going to be doing a little bit of a walk around the car today and kind of show you all the good parts and and maybe some of the parts that need attention too and so you have a little bit better idea about what you may be purchasing. Let's talk about the paint job a little bit. The paint job um, I call fair, although even in this um, color scheme, white on black, on a sunny day, you really can't tell the difference of any defects in the paint. But let's take a closer look on uh, this side of the car. I did do a little bit of a, a body patching here that I did in preparation to have the car repainted. Um, I don't think I'm going to be doing that now, but um, I kind of gave this side of the car a wet sanding and uh, it's kind of prepped for paint but other than that it still looks like it's the original paint on the car um, this car is an ss clone in other words an ss replica it's not a true 1969 ss car if it was i'd be asking over a hundred grand for it so uh, this car is priced around the twenty thousand dollar range and as you can see, the side badging on the side says 396, but it actually has a Chevy LS6 454 blueprinted rebuilt motor in it. It's got a Muncie four speed. And we're going to take a little bit more view into the interior too. and uh, kind of go through a little bit what's going on around there. Okay, let's take a look at the interior. As you can see, I put an aftermarket steering wheel on there. It looks kind of cool, I think. It's a uh, Grant custom wheel that uh, kind of goes with the car very nicely. This is a tilt steering column, which is nice. If you've got long legs and stuff, you get that steering wheel out of the way and put the, the steering wheel at any angle that you'd want. Um, the interior condition, I would say, is very good. I can go over a couple little marks here that are, are just a, some little problem areas here at the driver's side headrest. You have a slight little split at the seam. Other than that, don't mind my guitar back there, my mirror guitar. But uh, all the interior has been redone from the owner before me. And uh, let's look in the car and see if we can uh, talk about a couple things that that may need a little attention. Um, first of all, on the steering console, I'm sorry, the shifting console, uh, the wood grain on the side here is just coming up a little right here on the corner. Plus the shifter boot, I had replaced this and uh, I bought a cheap one and the... the uh, the, um, uh, it just the wet, dry weather in Denver kind of uh, created a little bit of a problem with that, as you can see. But that's a cheap replacement there, real easy to do. Um, I've got the standard gauges that came with the car, along with a better water temperature gauge, so I could keep track of the temperature of the motor at all times. It's got an aftermarket radio in it with a uh, preamp in the back and a booster. Uh, the lights work, the windshield wipers work, the horn works, the heater works. And as you can see, the inside of the dashboard is pretty standard when it comes to Camaros here. Let's talk about the wheels and the tires. First of all, I've got new rubber all around. These are Krager mags, which I think just look great on this car. Um, just uh, have had no problem with this car going around corners or anything like that. Uh, the, the frame has been reinforced at the subframe uh, clip and, and uh, with um, um, clip enhancers that kind of reinforce it let this car go around a corner really sharp just like it's on rails uh, originally this car was just meant to go in a straight line light to light and 
that's all it ever was meant to do but this car actually does a whole lot better around the road course okay let's take a look at the goods here we've got a Chevy LS6 454 rebuilt blueprinted engine so um, all the specs original specs from the LS6 were right followed right down to the numbers here um, this engine puts out just about 500 horsepower at the crank this uh, engine was rebuilt by a race car engine builder his name is John Moss and as you can see we've got hooker headers on that we've got a semi radical cam in this motor which it gives it kind of a lopey idle but during the um, as you increase the RPMs it smooths right out and gets into racing mode this uh, intake and is matched with an Edelbrock 750 carburetor along with a K&N self-service air cleaner. Uh, we recently put a front end disc brake rebuild on this car along with the total front end of the car has been rebuilt. All new springs, shocks all around, um, sway bars, all the steering linkage, everything to do with steering and front end has been replaced on this car and again it makes it just a fine driver. Um, the distributor back here kind of looks a little stock like a normal distributor, but it's, it's actually an XL electronic distributor. Uh, serves the purpose for this car very well. You don't have to replace points. Uh, there's no um, adjusting anything. Once you've got everything set, you're good to go. We've got a Holly fuel pump. And this is the engine compartment gauge with the easy access to the gas filter. Uh, this car does not overheat. Even in the hot summer we had this year in Denver, uh, you could take this car and sit at a light and it just will not overheat. It does very good that way. Uh, most likely from all the rebuilt parts in the motor, the water pump just keeps this engine cool. It's got a nice uh, big radiator so we really have no problem with overheating this car uh, just drives great um, I want to bring it into the the tag here so in case you need to do any research on the numbers um, this is uh, paint codes and things like that for this car Uh, the bat battery is fairly new and it's always been strong. This car it has power steering, but of course not any air conditioning. You don't want to put air conditioning on a car like this. Uh, the rear ends, a 410 gear ratioed 12 bolt rear end. As you can see, I painted the back end there kind of like an American flag thing. I think that's kind of cool. People comment on that all the time when they're coming up behind me at night with their lights on. Um, I don't know if you can see or not. The exhaust is a 3-inch exhaust. It kind of dead ends right before the rear axle because on a 69 Camaro, you cannot bend a 3-inch exhaust around the axle. There's just no room. Uh, for that so they dead end the exhaust right before the axle which from inside the car that kind of puts it right at the floor of the back seat is where uh, you're going to get some noise from because uh, the, this isn't the quietest muffler in the, in the world it's uh, very unrestrictive but um, the car is, is a little bit of a loud car you can always change out exhaust uh, systems on this to make it a quieter car, but I think it's just kind of cool the way it is uh, This car started out as a kind of a grocery getter Camaro. It was red and it had a 307 in it. I believe an automatic transmission also uh, the owner before me had replaced that 
with the 454. When I bought the car, the 454 was in bad need of a rebuilt. Uh, the valves and the cam lobes were pretty worn, so um, they were just barely operating at the time when I bought the car. So um, we had the engine rebuilt, and now it's uh, the car you see before you. And just so you know, the uh, I describe this car as a road car. We drive it and it's meant to be driven and that's how we treat it. We don't put it on a trailer and take it to car shows. Um, it's kind of another way of, of uh, collecting cars. You're, you're collecting them to drive them or you're collecting them like you do coins or stamps. Well, I chose to collect cars so I could drive them and this is uh, meant to drive. Again, it's not a trailer queen. It's, uh, but it's in really nice shape, gets a lot of attention on the road. There's people that, that um, constantly are commenting from other vehicles that go by. You get a lot of honks of the horns and things like that from people passing by and a lot of shouts out from kids on the street. It's just a, a fine example of a 69 Camaro. Uh, this car hooks up really good with the road. Once you uh, put the pedal to the metal, uh, you get um, the, as much contact with the road as you'd expect uh, from a car like this. It gets up and goes very quickly with the 410 rear end and four speed car. Uh, this car does very good, zero to 60. Um, it's a little tough taking this car out on the highway if you want to go 70 or 80 miles an hour because your engine's revving up around the 3,000 RPM range and it seems like you want another gear. However, uh, B&M makes a shifter overdrive for a car like this and just about for any car, but um, it's, uh, it would be ideal to, for, to put something like that on this car because you'd have like a fifth gear, which would be kind of neat if you're going to take it out on the highway and you're going to go a little more long distance. Although driving long distance on a 454 um, you're going to use up some gasoline, so that's to be expected in a car like this. So I'm offering this car for sale. Uh, this week I've kind of got a special on it. Um, I was asking originally $25,000 for this 69 Camaro. And for this weekend only, the uh, from the date I post this on YouTube, uh, I'm going to knock it down to 19.5, and it'll be on Craigslist too, under the Denver market for Craigslist under 69 Camaro. So check it out.